Hi everyone, how's it going? So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about maths revision tips for university exams, and I'm also gonna be sharing with you my revision plan that I used as a student. My name's Claire, I've just graduated from the University of Exeter studying maths, I've just finished my master's degree and I thought I would just sit down and have a chat with you about some revision tips, what I did to revise, this is just tips that I found helpful, I'm definitely not saying that what I do is the only way to revise, we all do our own thing, that's cool, but in case there's anything I do that you hadn't thought of, that's hopefully what this video will help you with. I know this is a weird time of year to be posting this video, I guess if anyone's got August exams this might help, but if not, I mean you can always come back to this video when you have exams and I figured it doesn't hurt to be prepared so thought I'd just put this video out anyway even though this is such a weird time of year to be posting it. Before I get into the actual revision tips and revision plan I'm just going to briefly explain what a university maths exam is like just in case anyone's watching this who hasn't sat one before. Basically in a university maths exam there are going to be some marks for things like definitions and stating theorems and that kind of thing. Some of the problems will be similar to stuff that you've seen in classes or in tutorial sheets or example sheets that you get given in term but some of the questions will be completely unseen. So what that means is that they're based on the content you did in lectures, but you've never been taught how to work through the problem, you've never seen the problem before, it's completely new. And the point of that is that at university, what they test is like a deep understanding of concepts, rather than more like A-level, where you kind of learn a method to answer a question. So if you want the really high marks in a maths exam, that's 70% and above in the UK, which is a first, you're going to have to solve some completely unseen problems, which sounds really daunting when you first like experience that. <laughs> um, but hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a few tricks up your sleeve so that that doesn't seem as daunting. So that's a little bit about what university exams are like. And now I'm going to start talking to you about tips. When revising for a maths exam, I kind of break it down into two main stages. I have the memorization stage and I have the understanding stage. The memorization part is things like memorizing definitions and statements of theorems and any proofs that I did in lectures, anything like that I would memorize. And the understanding part is how I would try and get the like first class marks, the really difficult unseen questions, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, those were kind of my two main stages. The reason memorization is so important is that you need to have memorized everything to understand what you're being asked. So a question might say like, prove, this random theorem and you need to have memorized the statement of that theorem so that you can do the question. So let's get right into it. The essential thing is that I used active recall as opposed to reading over my notes. What active recall comes down to is just making your brain do the work instead of you reading something in your notes. Um, so whether that's like flashcards or for example when I would learn proofs I would make myself write out the proof as much as I could without looking at notes and then I'd go back to my notes and correct the proof and I would memorize them like that just keep writing them out without looking at notes until I could do it perfectly um, and I just think that's a much more effective way it's not just me that thinks this it's like a psychology thing but um, it's a much more effective way of memorization than trying to read things over and over because then your brain's just not going to take in as much. When I was doing this active recall, let's say I wrote out a proof or something that I was trying to memorise, when I went back to my notes and corrected it, I'd use a red pen. I was told in school once that if you use the colour red, because we associate red with danger, it will make you remember it more. And honestly, I don't know if that's true or if there's any scientific backing or anything like that, but I always did that and I don't know, it seemed to work for me. Another thing I did for memorization is instead of memorizing everything once in the lead up to the exam, I would memorize everything in blocks and I would keep going back to things that I had already memorized and I would spread that over like a month or so, even more than that, like two months before an exam. The reason I kept going back to things and memorizing them like that instead of just doing it once before the exam is because there's this thing called a forgetting curve. I'm gonna have some videos linked down below that explain things better than I can. But essentially you forget a lot of what you've just memorized if you do it short term. And the quantity of things that I needed to memorize, like that just wasn't gonna work for me. So by starting the memorization like a month or two before exams and keep going back to it, what I was doing is 
every time that I started to forget things, I would interrupt that curve and like bring my memorization back to 100. I would not only memorize definitions, I would memorize everything we did in lectures. So all the big proofs, all the statements of theorems, literally anything that was on my lecture notes, I would walk into the exam with it memorized or at least almost memorized, like I'd have the key points. When one of those proofs came up, I didn't have to think about it and I didn't have to figure anything out. So that saved me a lot of time that I could spend on the unseen problems. And it also meant that I was very confident that I had got it right. And the last thing I did for memorization was flashcards. So I'd have all the concepts on one side and then the definition on the other side. And I used to use paper for this. I prefer to use paper when I'm revising, but I know there are apps out there that you can use to make flashcards and things like that. So just whatever works for you really. If you only take one thing from this video, please use active recall. Please don't just read over your notes. It just is so inefficient. So that's all my memorization tips. And I'm now gonna move on to the understanding part of the revision tips. So the first thing is that you'll be given example sheets or tutorial sheets during term and I honestly didn't usually do those during term, I just didn't have time alongside all my coursework and everything but when it came to revision I would do these tutorial sheets over and over and over. The best thing for maths I think is just to work through as many problems as you can get your hands on. That's a massive, like that's probably the thing that helped me the most with exams is just being really solid on the tutorial sheet questions. The next tip I have is to start with your hardest topic and start at the end of your notes. So the reason that I used to do this is because Sometimes in maths exams at my university, we would have choice about what questions we did, like we could pick two out of three questions. And it's very tempting to only revise the topics that you're good at and tell yourself like, I'll just pick the questions in those topics I'm good at. But sometimes you'll have an easier question in a topic that you find harder and it's worth having revised that harder topic because you're more likely to get more marks on that question. I explained that so badly, but basically you'll get those marks more easily than the hard marks in a topic that you're good at. So I always prioritized the topics that I was really bad at, and I think that just helped me get more marks overall. The next thing I have for this is something I mentioned in my study tips video, which is just to reuse as many resources as you can. Concepts explained in books, watching lectures on YouTube, re-watching your own lectures. Another tip I have for this, which I think is maybe a bit controversial, like you might hate this as an idea and it's totally fine if you don't want to do it but something that I stopped doing is I would stop doing I would stop saving past papers for the day before or the night before I would do every past paper at least like two weeks before my exam and then I would redo them the night before I just I never really understood the saving a past paper for the last minute because what if there's something on that past paper that I couldn't do and then that only gave me like one evening to fix that problem? I don't know. I think maybe that's that comes down to you as a person, like what you prefer to do with that. I understand doing that for things like A-levels where every past paper is quite similar. Um, but yeah, that's one thing I did is that I would not save my past papers, I would do them all and then redo them and make sure I had really understood everything. The last tip that I have before I get into my actual revision plan, I always aimed a lot higher than I wanted and I learned this lesson in my second year because in first year I was very casual about university. In, for anyone who's watching this not from the UK, in first year most universities have it so that your first year doesn't count towards your overall grade, you just have to pass the year. Um, and the pass mark's 40%, which doesn't sound very high, so I didn't really work very hard. In the second year is when I decided I wanted to now be working for a first. So I worked for 70%, which is the first grade boundary, and I came out with a 2-1, and that's obviously because I had like slightly underestimated how hard I would have to work to get that 70 and also because during term I had gone for the 70 mark in courseworks instead of going for like as close to as 100 as I could which meant that when I sat an exam and got just under a first my coursework wasn't enough to pull me over whereas if I had got 100% in my coursework and then had missed out on a first in my exam I'd have still got that first so that's a lesson I learned in second year from that point onwards I aimed for 100% which meant that when I was going through revision I did not let a single thing through the net. It's really tempting for me to look at a question and be like, oh, this hasn't come up in like the last four years. But that stuff always ends up coming up on the exam. So that's all the revision tips that I used. And I'm now going to explain to you my revision plan. So the actual schedule that I did 
uh, over Easter when I was preparing for exams. So at my university we had four weeks off for Easter and usually exams would start a week or two after the end of Easter um, and we didn't have any lectures or anything like that. All of our lectures were finished before Easter and we had all that time just to revise for exams. It usually came out to five or six weeks. I would use my time like this. In week one, I would go through all my lecture notes and make flashcards, and that was usually my first lot of memorization. The reason I did flashcards so early is just that once I had them, I could keep using them the whole time that I was revising. It just made sense to me to make those as early as possible. Week two, I would tell myself to do every tutorial sheet. I wouldn't necessarily finish them all in that week, but I'd tell myself to finish them all in that week so that I had almost finished them, if that makes sense. That brings me to week three, which was past paper week. So in this week, I would basically do as many past papers as I could. And this was early. Um, I get that some people won't want to do that, and that's totally fine, like do what works for you. But for me, the reason I did this is that when I came across things I couldn't do, I still had two or three weeks to sort that out. Um, and it was also a really good diagnostic of just where my understanding was at. Every exam is quite different. So a past paper, it's not the best revision tool if you're just using it to try and learn the content. So yeah, past papers are good for seeing where your weak topics are and they're good for practicing um, doing unseen problems and that kind of thing. Weeks four and five I would use to do anything I hadn't yet managed to do, like any tutorial sheet questions I hadn't got to. I would talk to my friends about questions that I'd found difficult. In those two weeks I'd also go back through all the stuff I needed to memorise. And then by week six I would target the really difficult questions and I'd read around, I'd watch lectures and resources on YouTube um, to kind of get a a wider understanding of the concepts we were studying, go back through like all my flashcards and everything, I would do those all the time, every three minute I had, redoing tutorial sheet questions. This was basically my week to make sure I was gonna get a first. So that's it, that's my whole revision plan. That's how I used my time when I was revising. You might use yours differently, um, but hopefully if there was anything I did that you hadn't thought of doing or that you think might be useful, um, now you know. If you're about to sit exams, Good luck, I hope they go well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.